publishing stage, publishing stage. You are in the publishing stage. <laughs> this is so very exciting. I am so happy you've gone through all the steps of the writing process and now you feel like you have this draft that's been revised and edited and fixed up and it is ready to share out. Now, when we think about informational writing, there are lots of options for how we can publish informational pieces. And I've made a graphic that shows um, a few different choices that you have. So I'll walk you through each one of those. And your job is to kind of think which one of these would make sense for my writing. So thinking about your topic and the type of writing you have created, what format would make the most sense to publish in? Okay, so let's take a look at those different ways, those different options you have. Um, this infographic about ways to publish informational writing. So we have, you can see 10 choices that I have created here. We'll start at the top left where we see a newsletter. So a newsletter is if you have, you know, different pieces of information um, that you want to put on kind of a one pager um, and I have some online tools that you can use. You could also do this in handwriting, but typically you want to use an online tool because the text might need to be quite small. You can see down here in the bottom. So this is something you would use some digital tools to publish and um, do some typing. Okay, second choice here is a poster, right? So uh, taking all of the subtopics that you made and putting it on a big poster to share out uh, with the community. This could be something that is done um, on paper, handwritten, or there's also some tools, digital tools that you can use to make a digital poster, okay? It's just kind of similar to a newsletter. Okay. The next thing over is a sculpture. Okay, so if you have something that you're writing about, like the Polar Bears book, right? Instead of making a book, Laura Marsh could have made a sculpture of a polar bear and then written little pieces of information to go around that sculpture, right? And um, that would teach, the writing would be in the little cards or the little pieces that go around the sculpture, um, but that is a choice for our informational writing. The next choice is a typed book, right? So this could be something you do on Google Docs, um, just taking the words that you've written and typing them out into uh, word processing, uh, something word processed. Um, and then you could add images and get that printed out or publish it digitally. Your next choice is a handmade paper book, right? So this is something that uh, I'm sure you've made before in other classes. Uh, just kind of that old school, you do the drawings, you have the paper and you handwrite it. The fifth, around five, one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> the sixth choice is a model. Now, a model is a little bit different than a sculpture. Let me tell you how. A sculpture is like, um, a, like a clay, you know, something you create that just shows the one thing, like the, the whole thing. On this, it looks like maybe this picture is dragons um, or dinosaur sculptures, okay? If we're thinking about polar bears, you could make a uh, a sculpture of the whole bear. But with the model, it's actually looking at like a 3D, it could be looking at a system or um, a cycle of something, or it's something that we make 3D. So it shows, a model shows a lot more than a sculpture. The sculpture is just looking at the outside a model will look at the inside or look at different parts of something. And if that's something you're interested in, I'm happy to um, talk some more about that and how you might use that in uh, your published piece. Okay, next up is a map. So if you're writing about geography or like some a country or something like that, you might publish a map, right? So you could use the land and you can see on this map here, there's lots, there's uh, writing, down in the corner and you could add more bits, more subtopics all around that map um, to publish the writing you've created. Next up is a diorama. So this is like what I used to do when I was a kid in school. I made tons of these. Um, it's like a shoebox, right? And you make a 3D uh, scene, right? So something that would match 
right, uh, whatever your topic is, if we were making something for polar bears, you might make a diorama of the Arctic, and then um, you would uh, put all those little pieces in there. So it looks like this diorama is the jungle or something. There's a panda in there, right? So it's like a you open up a shoebox and you put in all the pieces. Okay. The next is a slides presentation. I think most students are pretty familiar with these. You would put different information on each slide and um, then it's kind of like publishing a book, right? Each slide would have a different subtopic. And then the last one is a brochure. So this is a three, when you fold your page up into three parts and it has different information on each panel. This is typically done with digital tools because again, just like the newsletter, your typing, your writing might need to be really small. And so it's better to do that with typing. Okay, so I know I've just flown through all 10 of these, um, but have a think. Which one of these sounds interesting to you? Think about who you are as a writer, who you are as a creator, and what type of published thing would match well with your topic and the, the writing you have created, okay? Have a great day. Message me if you need any questions or if you want me to follow up and give any more examples about any of these. Um, happy publishing. Bye.